Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,294. There is no slacking in business. There's always competition. There's always technology. There's always things to learn. And there's always things to embrace. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, automotive enthusiasts. I'm revved up and so excited to introduce today's very special guest calling in from Burlington, Canada, Ron Baker. Hey, Ron, are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? Ready and set. All right. Ron Baker is the founder of Driven, a marketing organization where he has found a way to weave his passion for cars into his career. He's created over 500 car events for major automotive manufacturers. He's produced car-related television programming, five series in total spanning nine years on the air. Ron has also created numerous promotional and training presentations and written marketing programs and developed technology to enhance the consumer experience at car shows. He also developed the broadcast facility at Cobo Hall, Detroit, for the North American International Auto Show. Ron is a driving instructor who teaches performance and defensive driving courses as well. He continues to race, campaigning a two-liter formula car, and he is an accomplished musician who performs professionally, a man of many talents. So, Ron, I've told our listeners just a little bit about you. Would you take a brief moment to share a little bit more before I jump into the questions? about your career and a very obvious passion that you have for automobiles. Absolutely, Mark, and thank you for that introduction. Yeah, I fell into uh, the automobile world, the auto world, when I was very, very young, and uh, I was able to, by the time I was close to 30, figure out a way of uh, making that a a career uh, with the marketing and production side that uh, I had grown up through at that point. Well, you're a lucky guy. That's what Cars Has all about. Inspiring automotive enthusiasts who figured out how to wrap their passion for cars, trucks, and motorcycles into their lives. And while we do work hard, at least it doesn't feel as bad on those really tough days when you get to play around the car world, right? Absolutely true. It makes the 18-hour days go a little bit better. Oh, geez. Well, you're slacking on me. You know, <laughs> you used to work 24 hours a day. So uh, you backed off. A I'm proud of you. Maybe you've gotten a little help in your life. That's a good thing. So, oh, I can relate. I can tell you. Well, as we continue on your journey, I always like to start with a success quote or a mantra. This is some kind of saying that has uh, meaning for you. It's a nice way to get the inspirational tires turning here on Cars. Yeah, Ron, I know you love to drive, so take the wheel. The quote that I have lived by and believe in strongly, it can actually be attributed to Mario Andretti. And it's, if you feel in control, you're not going fast enough. (laughs) Yeah. Isn't that the truth? You know, I produce a book for people that I want to follow me on my email account, and it's called Filler Up, and it's a book of photographs of beautiful gas filler caps. I know that sounds silly, but if you look at beautiful old vintage cars, like the Taubo logo that's on the wall behind you as we're Skyping today, their gas caps are really works of art. And in that book, I lace some motivational quotes, and that one by Mario is one of them. How does that relate to your li- your life and your career? Well, both from the racing on track, it's an absolute truth or truism that if you're starting to get comfortable on the track, everyone's going by. Um, You know, I think of uh, tracks like Road America or or Mid-Ohio or Sebring. If you're not right up on that wheel the whole time you're out there, uh, you're just not doing what you should be doing. And I've found in business, it's the exact same way. Uh, there is no slacking in business. There's always competition. There's always technology. There's always things to learn. There's always things to uh, to embrace. And so if you feel in control, you're not going fast enough. I did a three-day driving school at Road America. And I remember about midway through the first day, I was feeling okay with the track. I'd been there and driven on that track before. And uh, they had guys in our ears, the radios at each corner, and we pulled off in the pits to take a break. And one of the guys came up and he said, are, are you feeling pretty comfortable out there? And I said, yeah. And he goes, that's not good. He goes, I want you to be uncomfortable. Drive faster. <laughs> and I went, oh, OK. <laughs> yeah, it's true, isn't it? If you're lifting in the kink going down the back straight, you're not going <laughs> yeah. fast enough. I know. And it's easy to lift in that kink. I'll tell you. Yeah, that, that track is... uh has some tricky spots, but I love that place. That's really fun. 
Well, um, let's go back in time here and have you share a story that instigated your personal passion for cars. Is there a pivotal moment in your life when you knew you were a car guy? Absolutely. And I can attribute uh, my late great father uh, as, as part of that, uh, that mom- moment. The first Canadian Grand Prix, Formula One, was in 1967. And uh, I, as a young lad, uh, was, uh, well, dad basically said, we're going to the race which was just an awesome, awesome thing to even think about. First time in Canada for Formula One cars. I happened to be listening to radio earlier the week of the show, and I happened to hear that the Grand Prix cars would be in the Yorkville shopping mall parking lot. I believe it was on the Thursday before the event. And wow. back, back then, they were on open haulers. And they had built these haulers in such a way that there was a gangplank gang uh, uh, ramp between the cars and you could actually walk up these stairs at the back of the truck and walk down between the cars so wow. there was the ferrari and the brabham and the lotus and it was just a phenomenal experience and then uh, milling around and literally just milling around graham hill chris amon and jimmy clark oh my gosh so I, what an indoctrination <laughs> i mean those guys and uh and you know who won that day? It was uh, it was Chris Amon. Jim Clark. No, it was Jimmy Clark. It was. Oh, was it? It was Jim Clark, yeah, driving a Lotus Ford. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Amon actually came in fourth. I've got a little cheat sheet here while you're talking, <laughs> so that's how I'm so smart today. Uh, I'll give that little secret away. But Graham Hill was second. Denny Hulham was third. So we had a Lotus, Lotus Brabham, and a Ferrari. Uh, but I can't imagine as a little kid... I mean, we look back now, those guys are gods. I mean, they're just mm-hmm. incredible people and in what they did. And, of course, they're not all with us now. But, uh, wow. Well, that obviously put the needle in the arm. <laughs> got you going. Big so, time. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Well, let's take a look at some of these roads you've driven down and talk about a big challenge or a big failure. I like this question in the sense that it teaches us how to move forward. It teaches us how these painful times can actually be wonderful learning experiences. So walk us through one of those that happened with you and tell us how that experience helped you gain even more momentum in your career, in your business, in your life. Absolutely. As an entrepreneur, you're going to fail. And uh, at times, and I did, I failed big. I just took a nosedive with the business I was running and uh, it the wheels just fell right off it. And it was personally very hard. It was hard on my family. But at the same time, you know, you very quickly... It's like when you fall off a racetrack, you very quickly look at what went wrong, what you did wrong, in that case, what I did wrong. And, uh, well, I took my eye off the ball. I started listening to the industry instead of listening to myself. And, uh, you know, everything went sideways. Yeah. What's the big learning lesson in here? Now, you, you said something right then. You started listening to the industry versus your own gut and what you were doing personally. I think that's a really important point here. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Well, the business I was running was uh, very much experiential marketing for the auto sector. Uh, The auto sector was morphing at that particular time, and there were a lot of big agencies coming in, jamming down the uh, the prices uh, to absolute rock bottom because they had, uh, you know, a larger scale to be able to international scale to be able to do that. And as opposed to holding, you know, a, a higher level and a more trained uh, individual going out there in the marketplace, I started fighting with them on price. Mm. Uh, as uh, the marketing guru Seth Godin will do, will say that's uh, that's the quick route to the bottom. Yeah, it is a spiral to the bottom. I I call it the race to the bottom. I worked for mm-hmm. twenty plus years in a company where we sold uh, goods, and we made a conscious effort at the beginning of that business to focus on it being high end. And it was really difficult when the competition started showing up. And then that big boy named Amazon uh, that came along and started competing on price. And it was like, oh, I mean, in the minute you start to try to compete in price, uh, yeah, it's the kiss of death, unless that's your business model, which, of course, for Amazon, that is. But they had a little more uh, flow going out as <laughs> than we did. Yeah. Uh, in our case, we decided to join them instead of trying to beat them. Mm-hmm. And let them sell our products, and it worked very well for us. But uh, yeah, it's a it's a tough thing to do, and you have to sit back and really listen to your instincts, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, if you're in the fight, you know, day in day out, and and at the officer on the road, eighteen twenty hours a day, 
you know, we tend not to take that time to go for a walk, you know, take a day off, go canoe, go to a racetrack. Yeah. Just clear your get, mind. get away, you know, and, and let your mind do its thing. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's important. You, I know when you're in the grind and I'm, I fall trapped to this is just staying behind the computer, work, 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 work. And when you get a chance to step out of your comfort zone or let's just say out of the office and just even go for a walk. Um, I walk my neighbor's dog. I call it walks with warden because I can talk to him about all my problems and he doesn't really care. He just listens. You know, he looks at me kind of funny sometimes, but uh, he does listen. But uh, yeah, it's important to listen to your instincts uh, because if you start focusing on all the shiny objects and the squirrels climb, climbing around your business every day, you're going to take your eye off the ball. Let's have a little bit of fun and talk about your first really special vehicle and maybe a memory you have about that ride. Well, I'm glad you said vehicle and not a uh, car because in this case, it is it is a motorcycle. Cool. And it's a 1971 Honda CB450. Cool. Nice. Now, what, you, what got you on a motorcycle? I, <laughs> well, it was just that whole car thing. I think motorcycles were more uh, accessible. And yeah. uh, I started agitating when I was 15. Well, actually, when I was 14, I was going to get a motorcycle. And uh, my father said, well, if you're going to get a motorcycle, I'm going to get a motorcycle and you're going to ride around in the back and you're going to learn how to drive so that when you turn 16 and have a license, I'll feel comfortable that you're safe out there on the road. OK, so that's what we did. The first motorcycle lasted a month and then we decided it was too small. <laughs> <laughs> 450 wasn't quite enough power to get yourself out oh, of trouble. Oh, the first one was just 100, the little 100 yammy. Oh, okay. Well, that's very different. And then the second one he got was a 200. And then when I turned 16, the deal was I would buy the 200 from him, uh, which was great. And then, you know, he would be done and, and he would feel that I was safe on the roads. But the, the bug had bit him at that point. So he bought the 450. When I bought with the money I gave him for the 200, he went and added to it and bought the 450. And then a couple of years later, the 450 wasn't big enough, and he bought the Yamaha 750. And I bought the 450. <laughs> Moving on up, as they say. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, when you're riding a bike, it is important, especially in the street, to have some power because sometimes you do have to get out of someone's way pretty quick, someone that isn't paying attention. My first bike was a Honda Trail 70. But of course, I was only riding that on the beaches down in Baja, California during camping <laughs> trips or out in the sand dunes in Borrego National Park. But uh, yeah, when I finally got back on bikes uh, years later, street bikes, I, I jumped in a little too head first and got an MV Agusta F4. Oh. And I'll tell you, everything. every time I got off that bike, I went, what am I doing? This is insanity. <laughs> <laughs> so I bought a Ducati 750 to kind of tame myself down. I kept the MV because it was just a work of art. Mm -hmm. I didn't ride it as much, but... Uh, yeah, bikes are fun. Is that Honda still around or is it long gone? It's long gone, but before uh, before I trade that up from that, I drove across Canada on it. And to think nowadays of a little wow. 450, 2,800 wow. miles each way. I literally wow. went from outside of Toronto to the west coast of Vancouver Island, which is wow. far west as you can get in Canada, and back. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, I'll tell you, Ron, you're already very high on my podium here, but you just notched up a few notches uh, to take on a ride like that. But that ride across Canada, that was something uh, I really thought about doing way back. I thought, what a beautiful ride. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. that, but on a 450. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even fathom doing it to this day and age. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Time and nature have redistributed my body. I don't think I could do that either. But uh, very cool. Well, how about Seller's Remorse? Is there a vehicle you've had in your life that you really wish you still had? I, I Yes. And um, yeah, a 78 Ford LTD2. What? <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Did you get the question right? A car you wish you still had, not a car you wish you didn't have. So, wh why, why that car? It was an absolute land yacht. I mean, yeah. to, to have that sort of vehicle in this day and age, I mean, they're... They're rare to even try and find one. I mean, basically, it was a poor man's uh, Thunderbird is yeah. what it was. And this thing, two-door, and then, you know, the door had to be eight feet long, I swear. I'll bet. You know, I'm part of a Facebook gr group called the Malaise Motors, and that is a very Malaise car, I would say, if you will. I, I and my, Me and my wife goes, why are you part of this club? This is like a car you would never have. And I went, oh, they're just a great group of guys, you know? They're just – they. 
they, they're passionate on an interesting sector of vehicles. So, uh, you know, everybody has a story. Every car has a story. Uh, as my friend Joe Pep, who's been a guest here and has his own podcast. Ah, uh, very nice. Well, <laughs> I would love for you to share what has you excited and fired up this year with your company, Driven. Uh, tell our listeners a little more about what you do, what has you jumping out of bed so early in the morning so you could get those 18 hours in. We've got some great, great programs going on right now. Um, I'm in the fifth year of running the Burlington Downtown Car Show. And uh, because I came at it from a, a producer point of view, it's not just a, a cruise day. It's, it's a wide range. I call it a celebration of the automobile. The oldest car that's been there last year and will be and has registered again for this year is a 1910 McLaughlin Buick. Wow. 1910? Uh, I'm going to have to look that one up to even see what that looks like. A 109-year-old vehicle, and they drive it to the show. Well, good for them. You know, those old cars, I spent a day on a tour in a 1917 Indy race car driving on the streets of uh, Northern California uh, up to a lake to have lunch. I felt like I was going to die every minute of that drive. But wow, that's pretty impressive. Very cool. And putting on car shows, that is no easy feat. It keeps me hopping, keeps, uh, keeps uh, the folks hopping at the, at the office. And we'll have 200 cars, and we take over the absolute main street of Burlington for the day. So we close down Burlington, basically, to put on a car show. We have the City Hall Plaza. We have the Performing Arts Center uh, and then the main street and just five blocks of it. And uh, Herringbone, 200 cars down that street and everything from the cruisers to the muscle to the the Studebakers. Studebaker Club always come out. Uh, last year, we had a 37 Rolls Royce, a 27 uh, Bugatti Racer, uh, 56 Porsche 356. So like just, you know, rat rods, you name it, right up to, you know, 2018 last year, 2018 Corvette. Now, where can people go to learn about this so that they're in your area uh, they can attend? Um, we have website and we have social media and it's burlingtoncarshow.ca. And Facebook and uh, uh, Twitter, social media is facebook.com slash Burl Car Show. And same with Twitter, Burl Car Show. And in Instagram is Burlington Car Show. So we've covered off the three main social media plus the website. It's an online registration and it's by invitation only. That's helped us build it to be the, the car show in this area to be involved with because no one just comes and parks. Everyone has yeah. to be invited. Very, very cool. Now, if somebody uh, came to your business and said, I want you to help me, what are all the different services you provide? Well, certainly car show is one of them. And uh, I, I actually had that happen this year where a, a company that uh, promotes uh, music festivals came to me and said, we're starting a new uh, country music festival. And given the demographic of sort of the target 40 plus age group, we thought a great added attraction would be a car show. Wow, that's interesting. A car show added to a music festival. So they're bringing in Alabama and Diamond Rio and uh, Travis Tripp as wow. their uh, their main headliners. And then uh, I've put together a 100 classic car car show for them. Oh, my gosh. You know, this is very interesting. And I've heard this from other car shows starting to add a music venue to the show or in this case, vice versa, to kind of round it out. And it brings a whole nother level of demographic to the show, to either show, actually. Uh, you can make a day of it and enjoy it. And sometimes people that are just into music might learn that they might be into cars too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good crossover in that demographic. And, you know, my Burlington show and any other shows I've done, I've always put a music uh, element into it. I think it just uh, adds to the show and it gives people a reason to maybe stay a little longer. Well, absolutely. And I mentioned in your introduction, you're a musician yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you play? Play trumpet, both on the jazz and the classical side. Oh, wow. Cool. Awesome. I'll start calling you Herb Alford. Nice. <laughs> and I'll play Java. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, absolutely. I remember him when I was a kid only because of that whipped cream cover. Yeah, visions of that. Well, you guys listening will have to look that one up. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I'm pretty sure I have it in my collection. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember sneaking peeks at that as a kid. So Ron, up next is the last lap. Before we put the pedal to the metal, let's say thank you to today's Cars Yeah sponsors. Hey, fellow automotive enthusiasts, you know I'm a huge fan of Covercraft. I've protected my vehicles with their products since 1975. That's right. 
all the way back to my high school days. Want to keep your vehicle's exterior and interior looking new? It's easy with a Covercraft car cover. A car cover is the best way to keep your vehicle looking great for years to come. Car covers protect your paint from fallout, birds, dust, rain, insects, and pollen. It's a fast, easy, and inexpensive way to keep your vehicle looking new. I use my Covercraft car covers every single day. Right now, you can get 10% off all Covercraft custom car covers or their ready-fit car covers. Plus, they offer you over 15 quality fabrics to choose from. Their spring sale is from April 15th through June 16th, 2019. Order direct at Covercraft.com and tell them Mark at Cars Yeah sent you. Covercraft is the right choice. Learn more today at Covercraft.com. That's Covercraft.com. Are you looking for a way to get your products or services into the ears of thousands of automotive enthusiasts around the globe? I can help. This is Mark Green here at Cars Yeah, and I'd be honored to be an influencer and ambassador for your brand in a unique and personal way. Five days a week, thousands of subscribers and listeners enjoy the Cars Yeah podcast and website. Contact me today and I'll show you how at mark at com or connect with me through the Cars Yeah website at carsyeah.com. Hey, Mark Green here from the Cars Yeah podcast. Did you know you can now see me on the Cars Yeah TV show? That's right. Cars Yeah is now on MAV TV. I visit some of the past Cars Yeah guests and take you along for the ride. Go to MavTV.com to learn more where you can enjoy Cars Yeah TV. Mav TV is also available on DirecTV, Fubo TV, Fios by Verizon, or you can stream it through MavTV.com online. And they said I only had a face for podcasting. All right, we are back, and I have a very introspective question for you, Ron. If you woke up tomorrow and you'd been manifested into a car, not what you want to be, but how you perceive yourself, what would Ron be and why? Ron would be an Aston Martin. Oh, cool. Mr. Bond, what kind of Aston Martin? Well, that'd be a DB5, but or yep. one of the modern ones, a DB11. Um, yep. I just have always uh, thought of the Aston Martin as the, the perfect blend of a supercar, extremely well-handling vehicle, but also an extremely elegant piece of machinery. Oh, they're beautiful. When the Vantage first came out, there was a Park Place Motors up here, about an hour north of where I live in Gig Harbor up in uh, Seattle area. Mr. Bingham there, he's been a guest on the show, loaned me a Vantage for the weekend. Mm. And I'm sure he was trying to get me to buy it, but uh, it was uh, really a fun car to cruise around in. And it's just a car you look back when you walk away from it multiple times because they look so cool. So. Very nicely done. Well, we are entering the last lap, and I'm going to fire off a series of questions and ask you to give our listeners some very quick blips of that Aston Martin throttle. So here we go. What's the best automotive advice you've ever received? That would be, there are no rules. Oh, now elaborate on that a little bit. I was working at a gas station uh, as a young fellow, probably 16 or whatever. And back then, gas stations actually had service space with them. And, of course, there was a full t- full-time mechanic working in the service space. Well, after hours, he had an old Austin Healey that he was dropping a small block Chevy V8 into. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I like that guy. <laughs> I guess I was a bit of a purist and a you know, snotty kid. And I said, why would you do that? And he said, because there are no rules. There you go. I like that. There was a guy that... He may still live up here in the Northwest at an MGB that had the same kind of motor dropped into that thing. And oh my gosh, I mean, it looked completely stock when it was sitting there. But when you open the hood, like, whoa, how'd you get that thing in there? And yeah, it was a blast to drive for sure. How about a personal habit? Is there one that you have that you believe has contributed to your successes over the years? There is. And it's never be afraid to try or do something. Awesome advice for everybody. Now, how about a resource? There are wonderful resources out there for us to access today. Is there one that you are particularly fond of? Yes. Uh, as it come on, has come online the last few years, the Haggerty Insurance value, Valuation Tool. Oh, yeah. Love it. it. It's just so handy from, you know, and from evaluating vehicles right through to if, if you're looking to purchase one, if you're looking to sell one. Um, I even use it from the car show perspective. If there's something that I'm not that familiar with, it's uh, it's just a, a great encyclopedia. 
It's wonderful. Uh, I've had McKeel Haggerty and many of his teammates from that fine company as guests here on Cars. Yeah. And I remember when he was way, I've known him for quite a while, way back when he was talking about building that. And I said, well, you know, the number one challenge is going to be accuracy because everybody thinks their car is worth something. And if they see something like in sports car market at an auction, sports car market newsletter magazine at an auction sells for a certain much, all of a sudden their car's worth that much, right? Uh, maybe not. But I tell you, I think that their valuation tool is extremely accurate in many, many ways. And uh, they're very open too to people communicating with them saying, ah, I think this number might be off a little bit. So kudos to Haggerty for that. Great, great resource. If I could wave my magic wand and arrange for you to have a drink with anyone in the automotive industry, living or deceased, who would that individual be? Be Bernie Ecclestone. Wow. Uh, yeah. What a character, huh? <laughs> I can't even imagine <laughs> what it'd be like to sit down. Is he going to have to be a very long, multiple series of drinks uh, with Bernie? Good single, single uh, malt scotch, I am sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah. A couple of <laughs> bottles, maybe. Holy cow. Incredible what that guy's done. And I know a lot of people frown at him for a variety of reasons. But when you look at the business prowess of what he saw, it's like he could read into the future uh, when he took over Formula One and then how he did that. Uh, absolutely amazing. How about a book? Is there a book you've read that you think our listeners would enjoy reading? And it's going to sound a little off topic, but The Art of War by Sun Tzu. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, that's a classic. Let me ask you this for somebody that maybe might be younger that has never heard of this going, what? The Art of War. Can you give us a, a real quick reason why you think that's a great book? Well, the, the main leadership advice in the book is a leader leads by example, not by force. You have to believe in yourself, appear weak when you are strong, and strong when you are weak. And the supreme yeah. art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. Nice synopsis. Now you guys don't even have to read it. No, you <laughs> should read it, actually. Uh, it is a great book, and you can read it on a plane flight. It, it's not a tough read, but uh, it's full of all sorts of very, very great little uh, anecdotes, ideas, concepts about how to conduct yourself in business and life, mm -hmm. everything. Yeah, it's great. I got that book years and years ago. I think my father might have given me that book, actually. Well, I'll remind our listeners, you can find all these great resources on Ron's very own Cars Yeah show notes page. Just go to CarsYeah.com. Type in Ron Baker, and that page will pop right up. All right, Ron, we are up to the checkered flag. And this last question can be a bit of a doozy. Today, I'm going to buy you any cool collector car on the planet. doesn't matter who owns it or where it is. I'm going to park it in your garage, but there's a couple rules to this little game. You can't sell it to buy a bunch of other cars with. You have to drive it. No garage queens loud, but you could drive it across the country, head on out west again to a beautiful <laughs> Uh, Vancouver Island. I'm heading up there uh, in a couple months with my son and my wife. Uh, it's the only collector car that you can have in your garage, though. That's the kicker here to this whole deal. So what can I buy you? 67 Ferrari Dino Competizione. Oh, oh, you had to add that little bit in the end. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, very cool car. But that one is very, very cool. Very, very special. What is it about the Dino number one, and then the Competizione, and my Italian is very poor, uh, that uh, intrigues you so much about that particular car. I just think that the Dino is a, an iconic uh, um, style. It is, it is timeless. It's when, you know, back in the 60s, when uh, auto and automotive engineers, automotive designers, more importantly, were trying to sort of balance that vision of the future with practicality in a in a, a moving vehicle and i honestly just think that the uh the dino uh just nailed it yeah i love it uh, the first ferrari i ever drove of course ferrari aficionados will say it's not a ferrari mark it's a dino was a, a dino ferrari the street going version of course a dino i should say don't say ferrari you'll get slapped by the the aficionados there but uh i just love that car i'd still love to have one today but they've just gosh they've gotten a little unobtainium uh, kind of like my beloved old Porsche Speedsters and a bunch of old cars that I like to have in my garage. They've all gotten very expensive. But I'll get to work on this car for you. What color would you like so that I get the right one? Enzo would only have that one color. That would have to be red. Of course. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I'll get to work on that. Ron, <laughs> you've taken me on a great ride today. This has been really fun. I want to thank you for sharing your journey. Could you offer us one little parting piece of wisdom or guidance before you drive off into the sunset in that beautiful 67? <laughs> <laughs> it paints a nice picture, doesn't it? It's, it's just a beautiful picture. I would say keep your foot in it and 
believe you can make it. Nice, nice parting thoughts. And again, if somebody wants to reach out to you, what's the best way for them to find you? Uh, probably through the Driven website, which is drivenorg.com. So D-R-I-V-E-N-O-R-G.com. Uh, all the social media attached to uh, there, or certainly uh, the uh, the business phone number, which is 647-558-2015. There you go. Well, listeners, I'll put all these links in case you're driving right now and you don't have anything to write with on Ron's show notes page. Uh, just go to carsyad.com, type in Ron Baker in the search bar, and that page will pop up. I encourage you to check out what Ron is up to there at Driven with his teammates and also this car show he shared with us today. If you're going to be in that area, that part of the world, I think it's going to be a really cool show to attend. Ron, thanks for being so generous today with your time, your expertise, and your experiences with the Cars Yeah listeners. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road. Yeah, thank you very much, Mark. Thank you for for your time and for uh, inviting me to be a guest on this great podcast. You're welcome. Thank you. You take care of your cars, but who takes care of your investments? Tune-ups aren't just for engines. Updating your financial plan is important, too. Your GPS may take you from A to B, but it won't help you on the road to financial freedom. For that, you need a good co-pilot and a very trusted advisor. Chris Kimball, CFP, is just the man for the job. He'll guide you down that road without driving you crazy. For over 25 years, Chris has helped people just like you and me with their financial planning and investments. With a master's degree in financial services, he is eminently qualified, and he's a car guy too. Learn more at chrisvkimble.com or call 866-ON-A-PLAN. Securities through Money Concepts Capital Corp. Member FINRA SIPC. CK Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.